Have you seen those videos that show the scale of our universe? They're pretty neat because they demonstrate just how much larger other stars in our galaxy are than our own sun. However, my problem with these videos is that we quickly lose context of scale because as each new star is introduced, they appear visually the same as the one before it. So we're just kind of left thinking, yeah, I guess we're pretty tiny in the scale of the universe but I wanna know just how tiny we are. So instead of using a scale that changes, in this video, it's gonna be locked. And just like you can have miniature scale models, our scale is one to 190 million. That shrinks the universe down to a point where the Earth is the size of a tennis ball. And that makes the moon the size of a Nerf ball. Now ask yourself this question, how far away would they be from each other? Elbows bent just a little bit here. Right here, I'll tie the lock it. Because it took the astronauts three days. That'll do. <laughs> there? Here. Actually, our little moon would be all the way over here, seven feet away. The real moon sits 250,000 miles from the Earth at its furthest point in orbit. And here's a fun fact. If you were to line up each planet in the solar system right next to each other, they could actually fit between the Earth and the Moon. Next to Earth, we would put Mercury, Venus, and Mars, and then expand outwards to Jupiter, followed by Saturn, and then Uranus and Neptune. And you could even throw little Pluto in here for good measure. This, it's just crazy that they actually fit there. And if you want to read more about this crazy cosmic coincidence, I've linked a really interesting article by astronomer Phil Plate. As you can see, even at the scale, Jupiter is pretty big. You could fit 1,300 Earths within the volume of Jupiter, but that is nothing compared to the sun. And for that, we have to go outside. Now at this scale, the sun would be half a mile away. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna put the sun right here. Ah, oh God, it's so bright. Okay, let's not actually simulate the brightness too. Let's bring that down. Okay, that's better. At this scale, the sun would be 24 feet wide, which is over half the width of this whole street. In fact, it's so big, the sun could fit 1.3 million Earths inside of it. That's pretty crazy. Now our sun is actually larger than most stars. As a yellow dwarf, it's bigger than 80% of the stars in the entire universe. Most stars are red dwarfs and they're about half the size of our sun. But even if the sun is above average size, it's certainly not the biggest. Let's look at Sirius. No, not Sirius, black. That's serious. It is the brightest star in the night sky because it is only eight and a half light years away combined with the fact that it is 20 times brighter than our sun. You can even see Sirius in most light polluted cities. Now a quick side note about these comparisons, I'm simply focusing on the diameters of each of these stars. And that doesn't necessarily correlate to how much mass a star has or how bright they appear because some of these stars have ballooned to such a huge volume that they appear absolutely massive like Arcturus. Arcturus is 26 times larger than our sun, yet it isn't even twice as heavy. At our tennis ball scale, it is 610 feet wide, which is about the length of two football fields. What is interesting about Arcturus is that it is flying in a different direction from all the other stars in our galaxy, and therefore it is hypothesized that it was actually formed in another galaxy that at some point in the last several billion years was eaten up by our own Milky Way. Zooming out, we get Rigel, which would be so large, it'd be taller than New York City's Freedom Tower at 1,872 feet tall. That's pretty big. But even though it's so large, it's actually a tiny little baby star. And I actually mean that literally. It's only 8 million years old compared to our sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. That is the difference between a 100-year-old person and a 2-month-old baby. Except this baby is destined to explode in a supernova. Not all stars go supernova though. Our own sun, for instance, is gonna continue expanding until it's over a mile wide at our scale. Over the course of the next five billion years, it will turn into a red giant, 256 times bigger than it is right now. Hey, hey, no need to worry though, because only in about one billion years are we gonna lose all of our oceans thanks to the fact that they're gonna boil away. But here's a star that even puts that to shame. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. star boasts a waistline that is over a billion miles wide. Your mama ain't got nothing on this. With Earth as a tennis ball, Betelgeuse would stretch over five miles end to end. It would be 10 times taller than the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It is, however, considered to be really close to the end of its life and is very likely to go supernova within a million years. And when it does, the explosion will be so bright, it'll outshine the full moon and may last as long as a month. 
But Betelgeuse is not the largest star that we've found. That honor lies with UI Scooty. <laughs> what kind of a name is UI Scooty? Astronomers think this might even be the largest star in our galaxy, and it's certainly the largest one we've ever found. If it were to replace our sun, the surface would reach the orbit of Saturn. It would dwarf Manhattan at a staggering eight miles wide. Eight miles! Central Park is only two and a half miles long, so this is over three times longer than that. To put that into perspective, that is higher than the cruising altitude of all airlines. These stars are the size of cities, and here we are living on a tennis ball. Do you feel small yet? I do. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is a project I've been wanting to work on for quite some time. So I really hope that you've walked away with a better appreciation for the scale of our universe. Now, time for a word from our sponsors. Us! That's right, we've been working on some really cool designs such as this one that you can find in our merchandise store. Link in the description. We also have shirts like this. It glows in the dark. That's pretty crazy. And for the first time in years, we've brought back the original snapback hat. So if you missed out on that the first time, we've got you covered. And lastly, we've got this crazy God of Jank shirt, Dobie, rendered in the flesh for the first time. Only a few days left for this one though, so act fast. And with your support, we're able to make videos like this one. So I really wanna make more, so I hope you keep supporting us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.